Hey everyone, it's Allie and welcome to my channel. And today is a super exciting day because my husband Ryan and I are going to a huge book sale in Charleston, South Carolina. All right, so yes, I just so happened to be looking around a couple weeks ago to see if there were any big book sales coming up in South Carolina, especially around here in Charleston. And sure enough, one of the biggest book sales in the country happens to be this weekend. It's located in Mount Pleasant, which is just right outside of Charleston. So I'm so glad I just had a whim to look up book sales when I did, because I would have been really disappointed if I heard about it like right after the fact. From what I understand, this is like a big warehouse type situation where they put out a bunch of tables with books on them and I actually went to a sale like this last year in State College, Pennsylvania. It does seem like a lot of different organizations do these massive book sales in the spring so I would definitely recommend looking around your area to see if there's one going on and also I think a lot of libraries are putting on sales right now as well. So yeah my husband and I are actually waiting for a delivery that we have to sign for. It is 10:45, but hopefully that happens really soon so we can get going into Charleston because if it gets too late then we're gonna have to wait and go to the sale tomorrow on a Saturday, which is not ideal. It's also not ideal because, yeah, my local library, I just found out today, is having a little pop-up sale. And it's not gonna be a big deal if I miss that one, but I would like to go to both just to kind of see what the difference is. I am capping myself at 10 books. I definitely don't need to be bringing in more than that. I have plenty of books. I have a lot more <laughs> than what's on that shelf there. And I also don't know what the prices are. I couldn't find anything about the prices online, just that they are as low as like 50 cents. So I'm hoping most of the books that I would be interested in are just under $5. But if all goes well, the next clip will be us going to Charleston today. everybody it has been a few days and I am very happy to announce that I did end up getting 10 total books from both of these book sales so as you saw from the clips the big book sale literally what it's called that was in Charleston was quite a nice experience as I said I did go to another similar kind of book sale in State College Pennsylvania last year and that one was a lot more chaotic there were way more books at that one in State College but I kind of preferred that this one in Charleston was very organized and I did definitely go at a good time. The people who were working there said that the morning of Friday, so like the very first couple of hours was pretty busy, but I kind of like just missed that rush. But there were still a ton of really, really good books there. And I would also imagine that Saturday and Sunday were super chaotic as well. So I do feel like late morning, early afternoon, on Friday was the best bet and that is what I would recommend if you are able to swing that in the future. And I am really happy to say that I did end up getting six books from that first sale and I paid a total of $22. So I do feel like that was a pretty good deal, especially because four of these books are hardbacks. Pretty much everything that I did pick up from both sales was like literally in my notes section of books to be on the lookout for. There were a couple outliers, but I am really excited to read those as well. So first up, we have The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. And of course, this was a book that was really popular years ago, like when 
when it first came out, of course. So this came out in 2015, nine years ago, and I just wasn't really reading a lot at that time. Even though like everybody and their mother has read this, I have not read it yet. So of course I was gonna pick it up for $4. In a similar vein to The Girl on the Train, I picked up The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. This I got for $5. And this one is a little bit more recent, 2018, but this is another one that I feel like everybody has already read and I just never got around to it. And I am such a huge lover of thrillers. They're like the one genre that I'm always in the mood for. And I do enjoy thrillers like this anyway, where the main character who is maybe a little bit unstable is doing some spying in the neighborhood and see some things that they maybe shouldn't see. Maybe they come to conclusions that are not quite real. I just find those kind of stories really interesting. Rear Window with Jimmy Stewart is one of my favorite movies of all time and that's like a similar vibe to this, I think. Okay, next up we have another thriller and this is The Wife Between Us. This is by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. So two authors who write together and I think they write separately as well, but I recently read The Golden Couple by them and I felt like it was really well written. I really enjoyed that thriller. I think I gave it either 4.5 or five stars, which is pretty high for me for a thriller. And I didn't have this book necessarily specifically on my list, but I did have on my list to look out for more from these authors together. This one I got for $4. So it seemed like they priced like thinner hardbacks $4 and if it was a bit thicker they priced it at 5 And I really like the blurb on the cover. It says, When you read this book you will make many assumptions. You will assume you are reading about a jealous ex-wife. You will assume she is obsessed with her replacement, a beautiful younger woman who is about to marry the man they both love. You will assume you know the anatomy of this tangled love triangle. Assume nothing. All right, and the final hardback I got is a thick one. It is The Lincoln Highway. And this is by the same author who wrote A Gentleman in Moscow, which I'm actually reading right now and I'm really enjoying that. And it got the <laughs> official seal of excellence. Not quite sure what that means, but I've seen this book everywhere. I've heard a lot of people say that they really, really love it. And this is one that I definitely wanted to pick up either at the thrift store or at some kind of discount store just because it is such a big, thick hardback. Yeah, originally this sold for $30 and I am not trying to pay $30 for a book. And they actually had quite a few copies of this. And I will say that about library sales or just big book sales in general is a lot of times they do have very popular books there because the library probably picked up just way too many copies when it first came out because they knew there would be a lot of demand. So I saw probably five or six copies of this same book. They had a few that were book of the month and I just prefer when a book is not from book of the month because I would prefer not to have like that little symbol there. Okay, and then I did get two little paperbacks and I think these were each $2. Yep, each $2. So this is kind of a random one, but I have been wanting to read it for a while. This is from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frank Weiler, I think is the name. And this did win the Newbery Medal. And I have just been wanting to read a lot more middle grade. Some of the middle grade I wanna read will be rereads from when I was younger and some like this one, I have heard a lot of great things about, of course, well-reviewed, but I just never read it when I was a kid. Yeah, I feel like some people kind of just like put their noses up at middle grade because it's like geared for younger kids, but oftentimes the stories are so good and I like that they're clean, I like that they're wholesome, they're nice quick reads, so I definitely want to start reading at least one middle grade book a month. And I just love the idea of this story. It says that Claudia knew that she could never pull off the old-fashioned kind of running away, that is, running away in the heat of anger with a knapsack on her back. She didn't like discomfort. Even picnics were untidy and inconvenient. Therefore, she decided that her leaving home would not be just running from somewhere, but would be running to some place, to a large place, a comfortable place, an indoor place. And that's why she decided upon the Museum of Art in New York City. And this was originally published in 1967. So let me know if you read this. I feel like a lot of people read it in school and it just was never like on a reading list for me for school. But I've heard a lot of people say that's one of their favorite books from like the elementary school years. And then the last book, I think I only got because it was placed wrongly in the middle grade books. And that is 
Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle. And this has to be one of my favorite covers of all time, especially when you look at the front and then the back as well. It just is such a cool cover. And maybe I'm wrong. Is this a middle grade book? I thought this was like a horror book. And it's kind of random, but I have been seeing this like everywhere recently on my Goodreads, not necessarily on BookTube or Bookstagram. And it's just kind of funny that that's the case because this is a pretty old book. This was written in 1962. So I'm really eager to read this one, but I am gonna do like a week of reading thrillers and horror in July. I'm gonna do like a summer ween themed week. So I'm gonna save this book for July in that video. And I think this is definitely one that I'll be able to read in one sitting. Okay, and then the book sale the next day, it was a whirlwind. I knew I would need to get there like right when it opened. So thankfully Ryan and I did get there like five minutes before the library opened. We stood in line as you saw. And as soon as we got in there, it was chaotic because the room that the books were in was quite small. There were not very many books at all. People knew what they were doing. They had been to these little library sales before and they were just grabbing books. And I was very happy to see that at both sales, the books were in great condition. I wasn't quite sure how that would be. I wasn't sure if there would be like library stickers and things like that. But yeah, at both sales, they made sure to put out really good quality books. And I think Ryan and I were in there for about five minutes because that's just how chaotic it was. And that's pretty much how long it took to be able to see all the books that were there. And I'm really surprised that I was able to still get four books and they were four books that I was really interested in. And this sale too, I think just cause it was lower key was cheaper than the big Charleston book sale. So the hardbacks were only $2 and paperbacks were $1. I ended up spending only $7 on four books. So first up, I was so happy to get this huge thick hardback for only $2. And this is a Robert Galbraith, AKA JK Rowling book. She writes the Cormoran Strike novel series. And I actually have not even started this series yet, but I am slowly collecting the books as I find them. And I just have yet to find the first book. So I haven't started it yet because of that. So this is the seventh book in the series. So I think this is one of the newer ones. Yeah, it looks like this was just published last year in 2023. So the fact that I got this for only $2 was amazing. And again, just kind of goes to show that a lot of these library sales have very recent best-selling books. Next up, we have Our Missing Hearts. This was another one that was on my list of books to get. And I have read Little Fires Everywhere by this author. It's been quite a while. I need to reread that one actually because I think there's a show that came out that I would like to watch. But yeah, I need to reread the book first. But even though I'm not like a massive literary fiction girly, I really, really did like that book. So I have been on the lookout for more from that author ever since. And this one of course did well. It is a Reese's book club pick. I like a lot of her picks and I don't want to read too much because I like to go into literary fiction pretty blind, but it looks like it does follow maybe a Chinese American family and their experience with American culture, etc, etc. So let me know if you've read this one and if you like it. Okay, here's another one that I was so excited to find. This has been on my list for a while and I just never really see it anywhere for cheap. And that is Hamnet. And this is by Maggie O'Farrell. So this is set in England 1580. The Black Death creeps across the land, an ever-present threat infecting the healthy, the sick, the old, and the young alike. And I think this is a favorite by Jack Edwards, the booktuber. So this is one I thought I was gonna end up having to pay pretty much full price for. So I was absolutely thrilled to see it there. I literally like snatched it up. I reached across the row to get it. And another just really interesting and cool cover. All right, and then finally we have Louise Penny's The Brutal Telling. And I didn't have this specific book like on my list on my radar, but I have been wanting to try this author out because I just have not ever read anything by her. I'm not sure if this author is considered more of a thriller writer or more just like kind of general mystery, but she does have a very long list of books that she's written. So that's kind of why I wanted to just try one cheap from her or from the library so I can see if I like her writing style. Cause if I do, then I have a lot more books to read. And this one is not a super recent one. It was written in 2010, but this sounds like it will be a good little book lover 
murderer's type of mystery. The chief investigator is following a trail of clues and treasures from first editions of Charlotte's Web and Jane Eyre to a spider's web with a word mysteriously woven into it. So yeah, that sounds very interesting to me. And it looks like in her bio it does say that this investigator, the chief inspector Armin Gamache, she has like a whole series on this investigator. So I'm guessing this is not the first one. So I'll have to just kind of see if you can read them on their own. But all right, everybody, that was everything I got at these two book sales. They were so much fun to go to and I just absolutely love finding good quality books for a great price. So if you want to see more content about like thrifting books, I would love to provide that. I'm super eager to check out all the thrift stores in the area. I just haven't really got a chance to explore too much around Charleston yet. And I know that there are at least a couple big used book sales like closer to Charleston. So yeah, for sure let me know down below if you would be interested in me exploring one of those stores. And if you like this video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. It really does help my channel out a lot. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye! Thank you.